Hey, what's up, dudes? HW here. What's up, man? I hope you're having a great day. I'm having a great day. It's always a great day when you get to sit down and you get to play the sounds of a Dumble without actually having to spend about a quarter million dollars or like 400000 if you've been on Reverb lately. Holy cow. <clears throat> and my dudes, it's, it's even better when you get to play liquid profiles of a Dumble. Am I right? Well, hey, spoiler alert. Um, these are liquid profiles of a Dumble. But it's not actually a Dumble. It's actually a recreation of a Dumble uh, 124, which is one of the, the great Dumbles of all time that's been kind of circuit traced. And you can find uh, different different amps made from that circuit trace. And I've done a bunch of different Dumbles. I've done 183. I've got a, a 183. I've got something that's like a John kind of Dumble. I, I asked Andy Fuchs to make uh, something that was kind of like John's. And then I have a Steel String Singer. That is a circuit trace of John's, now number two, Steel String Singer number two, from the Full Moon Music circuit trace, which you can go do some research on how that happened. Uh, you know, guitar amp needed repair in Japan, and somebody thought, let me go do that. And um, that's also the circuit you'll find in Sabago Sounds amps. Um, but anyway, I digress. There's all sorts of Dumbles and Dumble-esque amps out there. There's Tweed stuff. And we're always after that Dumble-esque sound, or at least some people are, and I really appreciate it. But now that we've got these new liquid profiles, I wanted to do some liquid profiles with a Dumble, but here's the challenge. we got two challenges in front of us. One is, you know, we don't have any Dumble tone models in the Kemper, so we can't really accurately get the, the correct uh, uh, gain control and the correct tones, uh, tone values in, in terms of the tone stack. But um, we can get some pretty cool stuff. And then e even if we think for a second, hey, Kemper, add some Dumble stuff. Oh, they're all different, man. They're all different. You know, between 183, 124, I think another one is 136 that I've, pl that I've played, uh, amps like it. You know, there's a lot different stuff, and those are just ODSs. That's not getting into the Twinkle Land um, and uh, uh, the Steel String Singer and um, any of that stuff. So you really are dealing with amps that are very unique, very, very, very unique in the eight later HRM stuff, the Hot Rodded Monkey, Hot Rodded Marshall. Um, they're really a different, a different animal and a different thing. Uh, but but today, looking at the 124, I want to show you how uh, I, I made some uh, some liquid profiles by kind of breaking the rules. So this was this was a 124 LPOD, and if we come in here on the amps, we can see right here that uh, we've got. Um, let's see, what are we doing here? Oh oh oh, brother! Here we go. Tone model. I'm actually using the Plexi Normal Tone Model. And what does that do? It gives me a tone stack that does very little and then I leave by itself. But it actually lets me clean it up like a Plexi with no actual um, bright cap uh, assigned here because I'm on the normal channel. So that's a little pro tip. If you want something that brightens up as you go lower, assign some sort of uh, bright channel, something that would have a bright cap. So in this case, a Plexi normal channel would have no bright cap uh, on the gain pot. So when I make it real clean, it sounds like this. Beautiful, right? I think super beautiful. As I as I dirty that up, I go about halfway up. So we're about we're like a plexi at noon amount of gain. Obviously, the dumble has more, but the channel that I'm doing here is actually the overdrive channel, and we can get a lot of gain. And we might sound like this now on the middle position. <laughs> Still pretty clean on the plexi side of things, but you know how a plexi runs. You run it at five, six. It's really just starting to get going. But as soon as you get at seven or eight, you know now now you got a you got a little tonal stew going. You know. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
tremendous responsiveness from the guitar's volume. So that's one way to do it. Now, if you get the free emails from Tone Junkie, which you should, by the way, you go sign up to the bottom of every page of the Tone Junkie website, uh, ToneJunkieStore.com. You just go sign up. We send free stuff with every single update that gets out there, every single one. So why wouldn't you sign up for it? Okay, now here we got Dumble ODS uh, 124 LP BRT. That's for bright. And what is that? Well, it's the clean channel with that bright switch on. And this time we're doing something a little different. We're using the Deluxe Reverb Tremolo channel um, because it has a bright switch on it. And this has a bright switch. Are the bright switches the same? You know, probably not. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Now you see we're only getting bass and treble, and I'm actually bringing this treble down a bit because the actual dumble, dumble is one thing if you ever play different dumble style amps, they have very aggressive uh, bright switches. And so here's that bright switch. And so it's a good sound. And so, um, you know, I think it lends itself to something a little more like a... You know, something a little cleaner like that. My tempo is—I'm sorry—the tempo is a little bit off on the on the uh, on the looper, and it, <laughs> I, I didn't catch it at first. But um, it, it's a great—that's it, a great expression of a dumbbell clean channel. You know, I'm throwing on a little overdrive there, but you know, even on the dirty side, it just sounds like a great old classic amp. Now you're hearing that bright switch come in. So there's some different ones. Um, there's some different ones up there. Um, I put this normal one in, and dude, you can assign it um, whatever, like, you know, bright switch you want, you know what I mean? Like, or whatever uh, tone model you want. This is a free one. I'll put some free ones up there to download at the link below. I'll put them in there, and um, don't tell anybody. Some people bought the pack already, and I'll make some more free now, because why not? But um, at the link below, you'll find it. But dude, you could assign any, like, tone model here, like, here, now I'm going to assign, like... Oh, this will be weird. This is a VibroChamp, you know? Now, it's saying, VibroChamp, I'm already got maxed out gain. But it's not until I start moving my knob that I get a little different tone. And we're not like, we're not somehow taking on the VibroChamp's tone here. We're really not. Um, what's happening is we're just, we're just raising and lowering the gain like a little bit, um, like, like this. We're just raising and lowering the gain and allowing uh, the gain pot on the VibroChamp, whatever those values are, to affect our profile. So. Thank you. 
So until you start turning knobs, you can assign whatever you want. It doesn't do anything to your sound. Until you start turning those knobs, you know? So, you know, you can you can make anything into a liquid profile. Is it accurate? Man, who cares? Sometimes we get too wrapped up with this like accuracy thing. And the truth is, you know, the TS9 didn't sound like a TS808. And the TS10 didn't sound like either of them. But is John Mayer any less musical because he found the TS10 and he liked that one more? No. Stevie Ray Vaughan was quoted as saying, yeah, we use the TS, we use the tube screamer. That's the only thing we had. You know, Guys like Hendrix, they use this authentic stuff. They used, you know, uh, Hendrix never played a Dumble, but I'd like to think he would have uh, had he been with us longer. But, you know, what was there? Fuzz faces. You go back and watch old Eric Clapton stuff. He's definitely using that wah on just to the toe position um, on some of that cream stuff. Um, maybe even for some of that woman tone. But that's all they had. He talks about that, and there's an interview of him like sitting up against his amp, and there's, that's all they had. They didn't have, there wasn't stores. JHS didn't make a million pedals. There wasn't a, a king of tone. There wasn't clones. None of that, or else they might have used them. And, and there wasn't groove tubes and uh, golden lion, and um, there wasn't like a, there wasn't eminent speaker. There was eminent speaker, but they were just, you know, they were white labeling stuff for Fender. So they didn't use everything yet. Because they didn't have everything yet. So when you're when you're kind of out there, you know, trying to figure out, well, what do I do with a liquid profile? Like, you know, do I do I make it? Do, do, which one do I assign? Man, you just assign whichever one, you know, kind of gives you the willies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 